AI can be a game changer when we're faced with that intimidating blank canvas, that blank page we have when we start a new tech project, whether that's coding or documentation or diagramming, that initial blank page can be quite scary. Now by suggesting structure or key uh, points, AI can get us past that initial inertia that we have when we're faced with that blank document. Now in this video I want to explore how AI can help kickstart your tech project when it's combined with diagramming software. In particular I want to look at three examples. One, how to create a flowchart for an automatic garage door opener. Secondly, how to create a mind map that will allow you to pick a microcontroller for your latest home automation project. And thirdly, how you create an entity relationship diagram for a customer database. By using diagramming software with AI, you get the power of visuals, but you also get the help of artificial intelligence. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Today's video is brought to you with the help of Miro. Now Miro is an online workspace that enables distributed teams to dream, design and build together. It includes tools to help your team create presentations and diagrams for ideation, planning, meetings, workshops, training and so much more. It does all of that plus it integrates AI to help you get past that dreaded blank canvas. You can find a link in the description below. Now, one of the aims of this video is to go beyond the hype of AI and actually look at some of the practical ways it is helping us in our productivity, whether that's with your own tech projects, hobby projects, or even in a business or an enterprise. Now, as I say, a picture is worth a thousand words, so let's jump into the demo. Okay, so here I am inside of Miro. You can sign up at Miro.com. They have both free and uh, paid plans. And let's just quickly, before we create our first board, let's just look at the templates, explore templates, all templates. There are just so many of them. Uh, you know, whatever you want, project roadmap, um, uh, mind maps, uh, concept maps, stand-ups. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here to do with agile workflows. There are just, there's just so many of them. All the different things you want for design, for planning, for management, it's all here. But I'm not going to use a template because the real thing I want to show you is if you start with a blank board, okay, you can use the integrated Miro AI to actually create something for you. So we're going to go over here to this create with AI button. And what we're going to say is, well, we're going to look now in this first, and I want a flow chart. What's a flow chart? Flow chart is that common, very common way of deciding the logic, the flow of a program so that you can then uh, design it visually and then you turn it into code. Uh, you would learn this kind of, you know, from day one in any kind of programming, coding, software engineering uh, kind of studies. So I'm going to say this, that I want a flow chart for an automatic garage opening system. OK, so if you think about that, you know, the garage has got to start, the door opens, it's got to start, it's got to stop, it's got to check for obstructions. OK, start the door opening motor, check for sensors for obstructions and for when the door is fully open. I want a flow chart. Now, this is quite simple, but this will show us the ideas of what you can do. And then we'll just hit create diagram. OK, so here it is. Here is our diagram. Now, this is great because I didn't have to start by dragging over a square and then typing in something and then connecting it to the next thing. Let's just have a look. We've done start the motor. Yes. Check for obstructions. Are there obstructions? Yes, there is. Stop the motor. Uh, are there obstructions? No. Check is the fully is the door fully open? Uh, no, it's not. Then continue opening, go around, check for obstructions, and you just keep flowing around here. Once it's fully open, you stop the motor. So there you go. Now you can, if you right hand click on this, you can you can move around. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. There are other different shortcuts, of course, that you can use. So if I want to modify something, you know, I can click on this line here, and you know, you can move it around. You know, you can do all the kind of stuff that you'd expect to be able to do uh, inside of one of these programs. Okay, it's you know, it's designed for this. This is its very purpose. You know, this is exactly what it does. Of course, I could add in more boxes, but the great thing is this. AI part of it has enabled me to save a whole bunch of time dragging on all those boxes, dragging on all those lines. It's built it all for me and I can refine it from here. I can tweak it if I want to, but I've got over that blank canvas, that blank page with, oh, I've got so much work to do even to get something up. It's done it all for me. Now I'm going to show you some more examples of this, but this is the power of the uh, Miro AI is that 
I get all that initial work out of the way and then I can concentrate on doing the actual design, which in this case would be, you know, fiddling here, tweaking my thing. Uh, but I get on with the work I've got to do, not with battling with the tools or battling with my own, you know, kind of you know, creative block. I, I, I've got something here before me. Let's have another demo. Okay, back with a blank a board, I'm now going to create a mind map. So I want to think about all the things that are to do with a mind map to help me pick a microcontroller board for a home automation project, similar to my garage door opener. And there are lots of things to consider. Uh, and, you know, again, I could create the mind map manually. I could start dragging on all the different things. But I let's just get over that blank canvas and get something down on the board. Okay, so here is the mind map that it has created. So as before, you can move around. So what, microcontroller board selection for a home automation work. So what are my different things? Well, the project requirements, connectivity options, community and support, compatibility, use cases, physical characteristics, development environment, board specifications. So let's just look at a few of these. You know, if I want development environment, well, what programming language does it support? Does it support C? Does it support Python? Does it support JavaScript? If I'm looking at the size, what's the form factor? What's the mounting options? If I'm looking at the processing power, what's the clock speed? What's the core count? How much RAM have I got? So all these things here, it hasn't told me what microcontroller board to pick, but it's given me all the questions that I need to ask. So now me, in trying to make that plan, I can go through all of this and look at what do I want? Well, in this case, I'm not interested in RS232, so that's not a requirement. So I can make my own list now, and this has done all the work for me. Look at this. Look how much it's actually built into this for me, because the AI knows what I'm talking about. It knows I wanted to pick a microcontroller. It knows it's for home automation, and it's just gone ahead and done that for me. So Again, just I don't know how long this would take me to do to, to drag all those things on individually, connect them all up and even to think about all the different things I want to actually consider. It's done all the hard work for me. Brilliant. OK, one more demo. This time I want an entity relationship diagram, an entity relationship. What's an entity relationship diagram, Gary? Well, basically, if I'm designing, let's say, a database and I want to map the relationships between one thing, for example, the record that stores a name and address and maybe a customer a database or the orders that they're doing or the products I've got for sale. There are relationships between these different entities inside of my database. So, of course, I could design this, think about what it means, think about how to design my database, start dragging things on. And of course, you will do that as you tweak the design, as you customize it for your particular application. But again, starting with that blank canvas, it would be good if all of the common things that we know that are going to be in a customer database are already there. So I'm going to say create an ERD, Entity Relationship Diagram, for a customer database. Pretty simple request. And it will go ahead and just fill in that blank canvas for me. OK, so here is what it's created. So there you go. We've got a customer which has a first name, last name, email, phone number, address. And then a customer with me has an order and an order is made up of some things that are in a product, a products. There's order items, there's the payment processing and it's linked it all together, showing me PK, the primary keys, FK, foreign keys. So it's all about relational databases, how they're all linked together. And look, if I wanted to just to uh, refit this line to be better place, like, there you go. And so, of course, I could add in new rows now. If for me, uh, the website of the customer is important, then I can add in a new row here inside that little table there. If there's other records I want to store, but the basic of it is here. And again, it knows what a customer uh, uh, database is. So it's come up with the stuff that I need to include in there and, and taken away a lot of that hard work for me. Now I can tweak, customize, tune it however I want, but I'm not starting with a blank piece of paper. The AI has filled it in for me. OK, so there you have it. Miro diagramming with the power of AI that helps you get past that initial blank page. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Is this a good example of AI being integrated into productivity tools? I think it is. Love to hear what you think in the comments below. OK, as I said, there is a link to Miro in the description and uh, it does have free and paid plans. So why not go over there and give it a try? OK, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.